The earth is going to be full of my knowledge. Don't worry about will I be known. Let's see how much of the earth is going to know me. The earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord Yahweh as the waters cover the sea. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 9. Ben Yahweh is here. The son of Yahweh is here. And he's calling for you. Come on and hear Come on and hear Yahweh. Come on to the temple. Come on to class. Come and learn. Come and hear. Come and see for yourself. Because the master oh, is the master Come. is Come on. Come on and go with me. To my father's house. To my father's house. Come on. Come on. I'm inviting you. Come and go with me. Come and go with me. To my father's house. Only 12 names get that honor. Judah is the fourth tribe, and that's you. You're chosen to be the ruler. You're chosen to be the ruler. First Chronicles 28, 4. If you can't rule in this great city, living like you live in America, or bringing the education of America, into this great city, Holy Jerusalem. There's no room for your education. Why do we know? Because you didn't learn perfection. You didn't learn how to be perfect, so then all you have learned is of no value at all. So don't come to me with it. I don't want any of your ideas about anything. How about that? I don't want you telling me you helped me be successful. I'm successful already without your help. So I don't need your help now. You weren't around to help me when I came by myself. <laughs> so no ideas you have of this world is going to work for you in heaven. You have, you have to just let this old mind you have die. And just go on and die and, and get ready to be born again because that's the only way you're going to end. You have to die. Wait a minute now. You mean I got to go get buried? Now see, you don't understand. I, you sound like that man was talking to somebody 1900 years ago. Say, well, is there any way? I, I, you mean I got to go back into my mama's womb? No, fool, how long have you been around me all these years? No, understand yet? Okay, I gave you something to read. First Chronicles 28, 4. Read, read about Judah. How be it, the Lord Yahweh, God of Israel, chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he hath chosen Judah to be the ruler and of the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he liked me to make me king over all Israel. Judah. Let's go to Jeremiah uh, 13, 19. 
and we'll find out a little bit more about Judah for a second. Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 19. Now Judah's chosen to be ruler how long? Forever. Forever. Let's see what happened to Judah. Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 19. Read. The cities of the south shall be shut up, and none shall open them. Judah shall be carried away captive, all of it. It shall be wholly carried away captive. Judah is chosen to rule forever. But Judah cannot rule in captivity. When you are made a captive, when you are made a slave, somebody else is ruling over you. And when you work, the money you work for never benefits you. The money benefits the captor. That's why he captured you, <laughs> is to take advantage of your labor. And he worked you for 310 years without a payday. And today, all the money you make is never enough to live on his lifestyle. Now that's the way it is. All that you make, you think of ways to give it back to the captor because your mind is captured. So here's Judah, chosen to be the ruler forever, reduced to captivity. Somebody else is ruling over the one that God chose to be the ruler forever. Now, Yahweh will not be defeated because he said you would rule forever. So though you're in captivity, it requires Yahweh to come and take you from the capital. See? It's incumbent upon Yahweh to come and take those who want to get out of captivity. Huh? Out of it. See, there's some, some of our people are tired of everybody benefiting from their talents. But themselves and their own people and their own family. So they say, well, I'm going to work for God from now on. You know, I'm going to work for Yahweh. And those of us that work for Yahweh, the world is bearing witness. We're blessed. We're rich. And we've only begun. And we're so rich that the devils are trying to take $12.7 million from us. I mean, that's quite an honor. I mean, that, can you imagine I am now so rich that devils are trying to take $12.7 million from me? What an honor. I mean, do you know how long niggas have worked and don't have nothing? <laughs> you can't even be sued for that kind of money. I mean, you are in the big time when you can get sued for 12.7 million, boy. I mean, you have arrived. <laughs> right? I mean, just to make the papers that somebody's trying to take 12.7 million from you, you are big time. And then, you know, if I decide not to let them have it, that's an even bigger time. <laughs> you do know that Yahweh doesn't have to let them have a dime, don't you? You do understand that, don't you? Okay, all right. And, and see, we are still chosen to be the ruler. Nothing they can do can reduce us to captivity. Huh? If they could take this building, all we're going to do is get a bigger and a better one. 
I'm talking about instantaneous. <laughs> right away. I let them try to fix the roof on this one. I get one with the new roof. What I'm saying is, you can't stop Yahweh. And I'm here to take Judah, who's been brought into captivity. Now let's find out a little. Let's go to Jeremiah 14, 2. Because, see, you've been mourning, moaning and groaning. Read. Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground, and the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. Now see, when you get back to Revelation 21, see, the people that belong in Jerusalem are black unto the ground. Got it? You got the picture? The people, see, the people that are carried into captivity are from Jerusalem. They are of Jerusalem. And in Revelation, it's The holy Jerusalem is coming down. Cries going up. And Yahweh who's up, is gonna bring Jerusalem down from himself. To who? To the captive. The one that's been a slave in America for 434 years. You are Judah, you are that one. Now, there's 50 million blacks in America, and I'm not worried about 50 million accepting me. Let's go to Revelation 7, and I'll show you what I'm looking for. And I'll show you, you can't stop me from getting it too. Now whoever wants to be leader over 50 million will find out in the end I'll be ruling over them too. While they're running after the big, the big prize. They don't know what the big prize is. I do. Revelation 7, verse 3, read. Saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God Yahweh in their foreheads. Now here are the servants of Yahweh needing a seal in their forehead. Needing a seal in their forehead. Let's go to Revelation chapter 14 verse 1 and find out what that seal, what's going to be written in your forehead. See, I know you have not known, so let me show it to you. 14.1, read. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him a hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. See what I'm giving you? The name of my father. And I'm going to seal this name in the heads of 144,000. Seal means it can't get out. Seal means this name, you can't take it out. You can't burn it out, you can't bomb it out, you can't shoot it out, you can't cut it out. I mean, it's sealed inside the forehead. Now see, there are people that come here that are really Satan. They know my name too. But my name is not sealed in their forehead. That's what allows them to go back. Get the picture? See, the only thing that can let you leave me is my name is not sealed in your head. You can call my name, but see, I can teach a bird to call my name. Yeah, he ain't going nowhere. He might get fried and cooked. 
If you get hungry, there'll be a fried bird, and you know, his name, the name is gone from the bird, right? So knowing my name doesn't mean it's still. Satan knows my name too. If you're unholy, my name will not be sealed in your forehead. Notice the description was servants of Yahweh. Now that, that takes me to uh, uh, Revelation 21, 7. See, you have a, a problem. You live in America and you got a problem. Satan is tempting you on every hand. This world is calling on you on every hand. Read verse 7. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, Yahweh, and he shall be my son. If you can overcome this devil, I will be your God. And you will be my son. Only if you overcome. Now, you have not overcome because your body is around here. That's right. See, you only overcome if you obey my will around here. And if you don't make enough money to carry your weight, that's not my will. And you can't put it off in the future. You have to do it when I tell you. Now, you don't have to, but if you want to visit this great city. <laughs> huh? If you want to live in holy Jerusalem, you'll obey my will. Well, what is your will, Yahweh ben Yahweh? The same as my father's will. I don't have a will. I'm just here in the flesh telling you what my father's will is. And I just told you in Matthew 5, 48, be perfect. Now, the service of Yahweh do not believe that's too difficult to do. That's what's beautiful about the people I come for first. I'm coming first for the servants. So you have to look that word up. That's one of those really heavy, deep words. Servant. See, the Bible teaches you about servants. See, we've been taught by our enemy to hate the word servant. So we, we don't want to serve. We want to be doctors and lawyers and and all kinds of things. I heard people say, talk about all kinds of things they want to be in, in life. And, and none of it is to serve. They, they, they want to make money. But they don't want to serve. Nobody. They love God until he becomes real. Huh? Why, why do people love God and he's not real to them? They keep on doing what they want to. They don't have to serve it. But see, I'm real in the flesh, and I'm telling everybody who I am. See, I, I'll let you know who I am. I'm the mighty God. Now see, if you have a problem with that, remember who has the problem. And I guarantee you, your life is full of problems. Guess who is without a problem? Me. Guess who else doesn't have a problem? Those who believe in me. Those who believe in my name. Those who believe on my name. And those who receive me. Don't have a problem. If you were it, you don't know me. To know me is not to worry. It's be happy. <laughs> to live in this great city, Holy Jerusalem, you have to be generous. Yes, 
Now, you cannot live in this great city unless you're generous. You cannot live in holy Jerusalem unless you're generous. And you cannot be generous unless you understand generosity. And you cannot understand generosity without 2 Timothy 2.15. Uh -huh. Well, let's see if somebody doesn't know what that is. So let's, I know most of you know, but let's turn to 2 Timothy 2.15 and show you the only way you can learn how to be generous. I'm here to qualify all who want to live in this great city to be able to do so. All who want to live in Holy Jerusalem. See, this was fine long as you could read it in a book go to church and everybody hot, holler and scream and shout and, and go and give your offering and go home. I mean, this is fine. Talk all about heaven you want to. And the deceivers have everybody in church believing when they die, they go into heaven. The reason he can get away with that is the preacher doesn't teach you that heaven is coming down to the earth. Huh? Oh, you didn't know that? Yeah, honey, yeah. <laughs> yeah, read 2 Timothy 2 15 first. Read. Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay, you got to study. Now let's go back to Revelation 21 and I'm going to show you that any preacher that told you that your grandma and your mama is in heaven lied. Because heaven ain't yet. It's not yet. Where, where you're going to live with Yahweh exists, but you're not going there unless you're generous. You're not going to live in it unless you're generous. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 21 and verse 1. Read. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Now, what's beautiful about this is the replacement value. All that you think is heaven is going to pass away. Hmm? Now you know what you think heaven is. Big bank account. Big house. The car of your dream. Your own private bar. With every kind of liquor that your friends drink. So when they come in, you can show off. Huh? I mean, what would you like to drink, bruh? What's your, you know, what's your flavor? Big time, you know what I mean? Bunch of bedrooms. I mean, you probably been fantasizing about that hundred million dollars that was up there in Pennsylvania. You probably couldn't sleep for nights. Trying to just, boy, if I had those numbers, boy, what I could do for Yahweh. <laughs> Some of you thought about praying and taking a flight. That's all right. Some of you thought about riding the bike up there. Thought that would be all right, too. Some of you thought about you'd hitchhike. But see, none of that's all right. <clears throat> uh, 
you know, heaven, yacht, private jet. You know what I mean? Servants, don't have to work no more. Just big time money. I mean, money will solve every problem you have on this earth. Yeah, you, you, you think like that in this world. But all of what you think this heaven is, is on its way out. What kind of heaven is coming? It says a new earth. But see, you, that means what? See, you don't get to leave the earth while it's made over. He didn't say that. It just says what you think it is, is getting ready to pass away. And I can assure you, you won't be leaving. And when it gets cleaned up, you're going to have to help clean it. Yeah, you that's left to live in it, you'll be glad to clean the earth up and let's have some clear water again and clean air, and healthy land again. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. But see, it takes, you have to get rid of the old mind and take on a new mind to go along with this new earth and this new heaven. And your mind has to be a perfect mind so that we'll have a perfect earth. See, heaven is perfect. So the only people that are going to really want to live in heaven and make the sacrifices necessary to live in heaven are generous people. Now this word generosity comes from the word I shared with you last week. What? Charity. Generosity is a synonym of charity. You have to be charitable. Huh? What verse? Colossians 3.14? It's all in the book. That's it. Can't get around it. Read. And above all these things, put on charity which is the bond of perfectness. I told you. What is a bond? That's what holds you together. And that's why we're coming together in unity. We, we exhibit the only unity among black folk in America. And our love may not be perfect, but I'm teaching you perfect love. I'm teaching you how to love perfectly. So you haven't known how. And me telling you is not enough. You'll never be perfect in your love with me telling you. I have to show you how. And you've never known how. So my message is alien to this world's knowledge. My message tonight is strange to this world's thinking. And you have to be a special kind of person to be attracted to what I'm teaching tonight. Because after all, this is a, a very precious revelation. And it's not meant for everybody. This message is meant for the servants of Yahweh. Those who want to be the servants. That's who this message is for tonight. Now you who don't want to be the servants of Yahweh, we'll get you on the backside. See, don't worry, I, I got a place for you. You may not like the place I have for you, but I still got one. See, I have a lot of different places for people. Dude, I have a lot of different positions for people. Sometimes you, you know, sometimes I try people in the kingdom of Yahweh, I try people out in different positions, and I notice some people say, I'll do anything for Yahweh until I give them certain positions. <laughs> then I find out that I have to let them see they didn't mean what they said. 
I know from the beginning that when people talk, they don't always know what they're saying. But I endure it anyway. I let them say it. and They think they're fooling me and I, I give them a position. And, and they didn't mean anything for Yahweh. Because <laughs> see, anything is big. You know, sometimes anything is all encompassing. Some people say, whatever. And then I give them whatever. <laughs> and then they act like they don't like whatever. <laughs> sometimes I give people a job that they say they like. <laughs> and then they come back to me later and start saying, well, I really didn't know what I was saying. I thought I liked that. <laughs> so then I, I have mercy and I switch them off. What else do you think you like? And if they name it, I'll give them that too. Because see, I'm building a kingdom. In the kingdom is, is every kind of job that you can think of. I mean, there's no limit to your, to your job. I have a job for everybody on the planet Earth, in all the galaxies. I have a, a job for everybody, in a galactic job. But right now, I'm really looking for those who want the job of being a servant of Yahweh. Because they predicate what heaven is to become. It is with the servants of Yahweh that I will establish the kingdom of heaven which shall never be destroyed. Because only the servants are going to take time and hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me, hear me.